Thank you everyone for being here. I'm very happy to present our project Michigan Diaries, which is uh, a, a digital humanities project. Um, MI, for those of you who are not familiar, is the um, state code for Michigan. So that's Michigan Diaries. Um, so I am a linguist. My colleague Suzanne Wagner is here as well. She's also a linguist. Um, and Michigan's Diaries started at the very beginning of the pandemic kind of born out of very linguistic specific questions. Um, so we know that language change, I'm interested in how language changes from generation to generation of speakers. And we know that language change is normally driven primarily by face-to-face -face interaction. And so the lockdowns at the beginning of the pandemic threatened to cause potentially a really big disruption to this mechanism of language change. Um, At the same time, we also recognize that people across the country were also thrown into this unprecedented social landscape. Um, and we wanted to provide a way for people to document how their lives and their language was changing in real time. And so to do this, we turned to self recordings, uh, what we're calling audio diaries, as a safe and remote method of collecting spontaneous speech very quickly um, from speakers all across the state. Um, so we, we ended up uh, working with some folks at Michigan State to develop a native iOS and Android app. Um, this has a ton of benefits to us. It allows us to collect data from a wide geographic area. For us, we're focusing on Michigan, but of course, with an app, this is actually not really geographically restricted. Um, it also allows participants to participate on their own schedule so they could sit down whenever they want and just tell us about their day Whenever, whenever they've got the time for it. Um, and they're free to say whatever they like. So we pitch this as a diary and, and participants really are using it quite like a diary where they're telling us everyday stories about their life. And this is actually perfect for us because as linguists, what we really care about um, in order to analyze how language is changing as it's used in everyday life, we need casual speech. We need people to be able to feel like they can speak informally, feel like they can share their private thoughts with us. Um, so there's a lot of sort of work that we did behind the scenes to try to make people feel even more comfortable sharing their everyday thoughts with us. Um, so one of these things is we have a website where people can sign up, uh, new participants. Um, but we also select a handful of selected stories each week that we've heard to give people a sense of community, what other people are going through. And, and we often have diarists respond to each other's diary entries, which is pretty cool, I think. Um, and uh, these selected stories are anonymous. So um, we always uh, take out uh, identifying information on all of the stories that we put up on our website. But on our website, there's also a page where people can get to know the team. Uh, and our team, mate, our team member page also includes little stories from each of our team members. And those are anonymous to feel like they're getting to know us. And so what this results in is a diary archives, which is available on our website, that has a handful of selected stories every single week dating back to April of 2020. Um, we're still ongoing. So our story selection team is working right now to pick the stories for the next week. Um, another way that we, and this is like part of the mechanism of the project itself, to encourage participants to talk casually is that we uh, give them to topics to talk about. So we send an, out an email every single week that includes updates from the team, like if we have an app update, uh, selected stories from last week so they can get to know what people were talking about last week, um, and new diary prompts, which we work every week in our team to create new questions to send out. And so that keeps in, uh, participating in the, in the project fresh and exciting, we hope. Um, and so far, we think it's working. So, so far, uh, over the past, I guess, two years, 24 months, we have received over 2,700 diary submissions from over 350 diarists individually, which amounts to over 575 audio, or hours of audio diary, which for, for scope, for a linguistics project, this is a very big data set. We've also received stories, and sort of importantly for me as a sociolinguist, uh, we've received stories that cover a range of experiences, topics, and emotions. So 
A, this tells us that diarists are actually feeling comfortable sharing sometimes even very personal and difficult experience with us. Um, we've ex received diary entries where diarists will break down in tears actually in the middle of the story that they're telling or uh, diarists sharing stories of real hope. And then this is actually beautiful data for us. We hear a lot of stories that might be considered sort of mundane, the everyday, here's what I did today. But that's beautiful data for a project that's trying to document how lives are changing, right? Let's see, your five um, minutes are up. If you could please wrap up. Oh gosh, I didn't hear your other warning, sorry. Um, and we ask about linguistic questions too. I'm just gonna quick zoom ahead. Uh, we've got a lot of community partners that we try to work with um, that have helped us connect with potential diarists. And I'll, I'll just end with this. Um, we also have youth interns as part of the project, which I'm really excited about. Um, but one thing that we're really excited about is potential engagement with other folks that are interested in using our archives. So I was going to end with a um, quick tour of the archives. Sorry, I still have like 30 seconds on my clock. I completely misjudged that. Um, that I would love to talk about in the question Q&A period later on and maybe even share some of our favorite stories from kids, from teens, and from adults. Thank you.